Hi, this is Lara from Pearl Soho, and I'm going to demonstrate a very basic mending technique, often referred to as the weaving method. As you can see here, I have a big swatch of knit fabric um, with a hole in the middle, and I have a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, repair yarn. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using two different colors, um, one for the warp and one for the weft. Um, and in addition, I'm going to be using one of our mending mushrooms. Um, it's a really handy tool for controlling um, and securing your what you're mending and making sure your tension remains even throughout the process. Um, and because of the size and shape of my swatch and the hole, I chose the toadstool. Um, all right, let's get ready to mend. There are a few preparatory steps before you can start weaving. First, you'll want to trim away any loose ends that might get in the way while you're doing the weaving steps. There we go. When it comes to selecting yarn to use for repairing, make sure you select something that is similar in gauge to the fabric you're gonna be repairing. If you're gonna veer either a little thicker or a little thinner than uh, the gauge of the fabric, I would recommend going just a hair thinner. Next, center the hole on top of the mending mushroom. Either hold the work around the stem of the mushroom with your hand or secure it with an extra length of yarn, or both. Be sure to not pull the fabric too tight or have it too loose. This is gonna help you maintain tension in the following steps. The final preparatory step is to map out where you'll be working. You'll want your new woven piece of fabric to overlap the edge of the hole by about a half inch on every side. So for me, I'll probably be working from about this row of stitches to this row up here, and similarly around this column to this column. Um, now that we've finished prepping, let's weave. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a warp. This is gonna be a series of strands of yarn that stretch over the hole from top to bottom, running um, pretty much parallel to the columns of knit stitches. So with a threaded tapestry needle, once again, find a spot that's about a half inch below this edge of the knitting and a half inch off of this edge of the knitting. Let's say, say about right here to be extra safe and bring the tip of your tapestry needle underneath a full stitch. So you can see both legs, that little V right there. I'm gonna pull this needle through the fabric. Now, you only need about five or six inches of tail to weave in, but I'm gonna leave an extra long tail just so I can tack it down with my thumb down at the stem uh, so it won't get in my way as I continue to work. Now, I'm gonna go right up the same exact column of this stitch we went under, go straight up about a half inch off of this edge of this, this edge of the hole, say about right here is safe. Once again, bring your tapestry needle under both legs of a stitch in the same column as you just went through and pull your yarn through. Be careful not to pull it too tight be careful not to leave it too loose. You want it right perfectly in the middle. Um, now we're gonna come back down to this bottom row of stitches here that we're gonna work, work across. Identify where you um, originally or previously worked in this row. Find the stitch right next to it. Bring your tapestry needle through it and pull the yarn. There we go. And then once again, we go up to the top row of stitches. Find where you previously worked, find the stitch right next to it, pull your needle through. And you just continue in this fashion across the entire width of your hole until you've worked um, 
beyond a half inch from this edge. So, yeah, just being careful, mindful of your tension the whole way. But that's it, that's how you make the warp. And next, we'll do the weft. Now that I've created a warp, I'm ready to weave my weft. The weft is similar in that it's a series of strands um, that will cross over the hole in the fabric. Um, this time though, they're gonna run perpendicular to the warp or parallel to the rows of the stitches in your knitting. Now, similar to how, similarly to how we anchored the warp along a single row of stitches, both along the top and bottom of the hole, for the weft, we're gonna be anchoring our stitches along a single column on either side of the warp. I'm gonna call that my anchoring column. So um, the first thing I wanna do when I grab my threaded tapestry needle is identify where we began that warp. So here it is this stitch right here. And what I wanna do is go one column over, that would be here, and one stitch up. So draw your tapestry needle from right to left, if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you'll probably be starting on the other side. Um, and I'm gonna leave a pretty generous tail here. And that's so I can tack it down with my thumb just like we did with the other tail. And we'll come back to those later. Now, I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and weave over and under and over and over, no, over and under and over and under until I reach my other anchoring column. So um, I'm actually gonna, yeah, there we go. Under, so go under, over, under, over, under, over. And if you have a really big hole, you know, you'll have to do this in, and segments, you won't be able to just like, you know, reach the tapestry needle all the way across and that's totally fine. Just when you're pulling your thread, be mindful of the, your tension, just like you were when you were doing the warp. So again, I'm gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Great. There we go. And now um, I'm gonna identify, you can see right here, this is the last column we worked into for the warp. And so I wanna go, I wanna go one column over. All right, one column over, here we go, right here. And then I wanna go one stitch up. And so again, from, from right to left, I'm gonna push this tapestry needle through that stitch. And now we're gonna work from left to right. So I'm gonna insert my tapestry needle right here into the stitch directly above the one we just worked into. And then I'm gonna weave my way back across the weft, but this time I'll be going over the strands that I had gone under and under the strands that I had gone over. So, again, take as many stitches as you'd like at a time. Um, you can use the tip of your tapestry needle to kind of like nudge your threads in place if they get out of whack at any point. Um, and then we're, our goal is to just get over to that anchoring column. There we go. Over, under, there you go. Over, under, over. Great. Now we've done it. We're back at the other anchoring column. And so I'm going to find the stitch that we previously worked into right here. And I'm gonna insert my tapestry needle from left to right into underneath both legs of the stitch directly above it. And now you just continue in this fashion, picking up, you know, changing, di changing directions, working into the stitch directly where you, above where you previously worked, weaving across, changing directions, picking up, weaving across, and you do that for the entire height of your warp, ending um, one stitch below the anchoring row here. Um, and that's it. I'm going to just carry on. Okay. 
Once you've finished weaving, remove your fabric from the mending mushroom. Bring, use your tapestry needle to bring your ends to the wrong side of the fabric. Weave in your ends. Um, you might want to give your piece a, a little steam or lay it out flat to let it relax a little bit, um, but it should be good to go. That's it. That's a very basic mending technique called the weaving method. Mm -hmm.